Hello, my name is Karina and welcome to Vegan Sazon. In today's video, we're going to be making vegan Cuban bread. I'm gonna show you how to make it and it's gonna come out delicious, fluffy, amazing. I love it, I hope you love it and let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna work on is the bread starter, which is very important to make this bread because it's going to add a lot of flavor. That's the first thing you're gonna do. So 24 hours before you're gonna make this bread, make that starter and let it sit on your counter and ferment and get all nice and goopy. The bread starter is just three quarter teaspoons of yeast, a third cup of flour and a third cup of warm water. And you mix that together. After that, you're gonna make some more yeast. You're gonna mix a packet of instant yeast with some warm water again and some sugar. And you're gonna let that sit for a couple minutes until it gets foamy. After the yeast is done proofing, you're going to add two tablespoons each of room temperature vegan butter and vegetable shortening. This is what's going to replace the lard, AKA pig fat in traditional Cuban bread, which is the only thing that makes this bread not suitable for vegans or vegetarians. And you're going to start smashing the butter and the vegetable shortening into smaller pieces. And then you're going to add some salt, the bread starter, and you're going to mix that together. Add half a cup of flour and keep smashing the vegan butter and vegetable shortening so it's well incorporated into the dough. And then what you wanna do is keep adding half a cup of flour at a time and mixing that well until you've used up two cups of flour. Then you're gonna use half a cup of flour to help you knead the dough and you're also gonna flour the surface that you're kneading the dough on. Just keep doing that until you have an ice ball. And the dough will start off pretty sticky, but once you've added that last half cup of flour and kneaded for about five minutes, the dough will be nice and soft to the touch. And if your dough ends up being too sticky after you've added all the flour, it's okay. Just add a little extra flour and go on to the next step. Then you're gonna put your ball of dough into a greased bowl and cover that and let it rest for an hour or until doubled in size. Depending on how cold your house is, it might take 30 minutes to an hour extra. After the dough is done rising, you're gonna knead the dough once again, just for a minute or two. And then depending on what size loaf of Cuban bread you wanna make, you can either leave the ball as is or slice it in half to make two smaller loaves. Then use your hands and fingertips to start shaping the dough into a sort of rectangle shape. And then you're gonna use a rolling pin to help you roll out the dough. As you can see, it doesn't come out perfect, but you want it as close to a rectangle or oval shape as possible. Once you've rolled out the dough, you wanna roll the dough up like a cinnamon roll and tuck the ends in like so. Then you're gonna place your rolled up dough on the baking tray that you're gonna bake the bread in. And you're also going to spray the dough with water to keep it nice and moist. Then let that rest again for another hour or 30 minutes to an hour extra if your house is really cold. And while your bread is rising, 30 minutes before you actually bake the bread, you wanna put a cake pan on the bottom rack of your oven and you wanna preheat the oven for at least 30 minutes. So right before baking, your oven is preheated, your dough has risen, you want to carefully make a cut along the middle of the bread with a very sharp knife. And if needed, spray a little water on the knife itself to help you make that cut. And be careful not to disturb the loaf too much or else it'll deflate a little and not be as fluffy. 
Now this part is very important so you can get that crusty exterior on the bread. To do that, you want to spray water all over the loaves once again. Then quickly open your oven, add half a cup of ice cold water onto that bottom cake pan, slide your bread in, and then you want to spray the inside of the oven and the walls with water, and then close the oven as quickly as possible. Then bake the bread for 15 to 20 minutes. After baking, place your bread on a cooling rack to cool for 10 minutes, and then enjoy! You can slice it, eat it by itself, eat it with some butter, make sandwiches, and the bread ends up coming out super soft on the inside and crusty on the outside, and it just comes out perfect. And your whole kitchen and house is gonna smell like fresh baked Cuban bread. The full recipe and any other information will be linked down below in the description box, or you can also just go straight to vegansazon.com to get the recipe for this Cuban bread. I have another mini recipe in here on how to make una tosta, which is basically toasted Cuban bread with butter. All you do is butter the bread and put it in a sandwich press until toasted, or do as I did and put the buttered bread on a pan and use something heavy on top so it can get squished. And you end up with a perfect tosta that you can enjoy for breakfast with a café con leche. And again, it's amazing. I like to dip mine in my café con leche. It's delicious. Comment down below if you also like to dip your tosta in your café con leche. Now you have an amazing recipe to use for your Cuban sandwiches. You can make tostas. It's one of the best breads ever created in my opinion. It's amazing. I love it and I hope you love it too. And this is what you want your end product to look like. When you slice it, you want it to be soft like this, like que casi se desbarata. Look at this. This is so soft, but it still has like the hard, crusty layer. Look at this. And then you can eat this as is. You don't need butter or anything. You can just eat the bread plain and it's super good. So let's taste it. Mm. I love this bread so much. It's soft on the inside, crusty on the outside. It's amazing. This is my favorite bread ever, hands down. Amazing, I love pan cubano. Eating it reminds me of my childhood because there was always Cuban bread in the house. And like me and my sisters when we were little, we would like stick our hands in the loaf and just take out the soft part and then like leave the, the outer layer. So it was like a shell, a Cuban bread shell, I know. Like what a waste. So now I always make sure to eat all of it, not just the fluffy inside part, you know, it is the best part. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you make this bread soon so you get to see how it tastes because it's amazing and you know, we can talk about it together. And if you do end up trying this recipe, please tag me at Vegan Sasong on Twitter or Instagram. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy my Cuban bread most importantly. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you on my next one. Bye. You want some? Oh my god, it smells so good. Ooh, and I love this part, the butt of the bread.